Hello, Keith Surtis here. Okay, this is uh, talk 10 in my uh, YouTube series. Um, this talk is about oneness, God, and the void. Um, one of the things that comes up over and over again is uh, a confusion of uh, is there a God, is there not a God? I was actually brought up as a Roman Catholic and as a Roman Catholic boy, I used to go into the church, usually when the church was empty, and I was drawn to going to deep prayer. I can remember going to deep prayers when I was uh, around six or seven years old. I also went into deep prayers when I was um, teenage years, etc. I left my hometown at 19, but I never lost that connection to prayer. And prayer is a feeling that one is touched by God, and you can say, what. Well, uh, you can ask the question, is there God? Is there a personal aspect to the universe? And you can quote the Buddha and say that the Buddhists don't believe in God. Well, in truth, the records, the historical records we have, don't actually uh, say whether Buddha, when asked, whether Buddha uh, said no to God or yes to God. Basically, from the records, he just refused to answer this question. I posit that the Buddha was trying to avoid the many arguments that occur between religions. And uh, I suggest also that he wasn't denying God. He wasn't denying the existence of a personal creator or aspects to the universe which are uh, beyond our understanding of the mind, because he took us beyond the understanding of the mind. So the Buddha believed in oneness, and that oneness is God, by another name. Um, Buddha did not deny God, did not uh, ever, as far as we can see, say there was no God. <laughs> so, um, the important thing to understand is that in the last 200 years, basically God has gone out of fashion, and especially in the last 50 or 60 years, and with the uh, assault of materialistic uh, philosophies, that basically uh, want God to be dead or want a personal director of the cosmos to not exist. Uh, political correctness has, has effectively destroyed our, our liking of the word God, and yet the word God um, opens up to us an extremely deep avenue into what we can call oneness. I love, as I've said before, the work of Caroline Mays, and, and in a recent video I watched of her, she said uh, it does, just doesn't cut it to call our spiritual journey a journey into the universe. For the universe is a very impersonal uh, concept. It doesn't hold the power of the God concept. Um, the God concept is a living, breathing energy. Um, and within Roman Catholicism of my childhood, I felt that energy, I felt it, you could say, flowing through my system. I saw the light of God in, in, in everything. However, I saw this God had both male and female aspects. I always had that difference from the, the Catholic faith, which tended to, uh, God was He. Um, and later, when I discovered Hinduism and I read some of the great Hindu books, uh, God was seen both in female and, and male form, and God could then be seen as, as the forces, both male and female forces, which work in, hun, un, hidden, in hidden ways to determine the evolution or the progress of life here on earth. So in an earlier talk, I talked about angels, and I said, you know, uh, that we are greater than the angels. And in some ways, some of the great esoteric teachings have said this. But one must understand that um, this is not to deny angels. I um, basically am just denying the pop culture denial of, uh, sorry, the pop culture um, popularization of angels, as if we have an angel for even processes just as finding a parking space. Um, it demeans angels. Angels are extremely powerful, creative, hierarchical forces uh, that work at the whole, the whole of creation, the whole building and and destroying of systems as the spiral moves higher and as uh, the whole cosmos 
developed. So angels do exist, but all of this talking to the angels and channeling of the angels is very suspect. It takes a lot of deep and personal inner work to contact these deep level universal forces. It takes love. It takes a dedication to the universe. Even more, at an even deeper level, it's a dedication to God, a dedication to the deep male and female hidden forces in all of their shades that work through to this level and determine at this level many of the hidden things that are happening. So we have to realize that a lot of the concepts, especially we have in the West, are dualistic. They are the product of a mind set that says that um, there's God and, and there's devil. And this devil is uh, the destructive forces of the planet. But oneness dictates, the actual concept of oneness or one God dictates that everything is one thing that everything you see as evil and feel as evil is just uh, the working out, sometimes blindly, of our collective evolution as we go up the spiral step by step. Of course, a lot of progress is extremely painful and slow, and it seems that, that we just don't get the lessons and, and that we have a, an extremely dumb mind collectively <laughs> sometimes. And you can look out at the, the pain in the world, and you can look out at all of the um, what can be seen as evil, and, and you can feel that this world is not a, a living, loving God. Uh, but you have to understand here that God, or cosmic intelligence, if you do prefer that word, gave us freedom, freedom to, to actually arrange this world how we collectively feel it should be. And within that freedom comes a falling away from the light, a falling away from the, the uh, inner knowledge of truth, so that we are not awake. We don't feel the compassion and the loving kindness and the wisdom and the diamond-like qualities of the God Force. Uh, and hence, we act out of this shadow side, which is constantly feeling sorry for itself, constantly weighed down by its history. Um, in fact, I would go as far as saying we're not weighed down by our history. We weighed down by how we see and feel about our history. Without a illumined mind, a mind of light, which can show us the underlying qualities and the hidden structures of our development. So development of me, Keith, is a very deep and personal thing. And it's the same for you. You are a deep personality with a lot of different psychological energies. Now, if you can look at that from a collective, not only do we have this individual, deep, and many faceted parts of the individual, but collectively we have millions, billions of individuals all adding certain shades. Now, that is a very complex thing, and you can understand why the world feels and looks fragmented and on one level the world is fragmented the world that we have created yet behind it all is this oneness and oneness is one thing working to be aware of its oneness you could say re um connect or reform yet at the deep level it's already connected we we only superficially reform it because it is one thing, it is the oneness. And that oneness is a driving force in everything you see, every, absolutely everything you see. You cannot escape that oneness, it is, it is the totality of everything. So, if we turn away from the uh, prophetic religions of Christianity, uh, Judaism, uh, Islam, and move away from the concept of God, especially into the Buddhist and, and Taoist uh, way of thinking. What I see there is the same basic understanding of how the inner forces of the cosmos work. Uh, it's just that they don't state in a positive way that there's a God behind it. They don't state any personal um, 
force behind the workings of the cosmos and the workings of our consciousness. Yet, they don't really deny it, at least the Buddha didn't. Uh, so, if the Buddha was just trying to avoid the conflict of his times by not giving God another name and, and refusing to talk about God, that is a vastly different thing uh, to what some Buddhists today teach, which is that basically there is no God, there is no personal intelligence working through the cosmos. Um, when I first entered uh, my studies of Buddhism, I, I found it extremely difficult because the West, at least the Western interpretation of Buddhism, uh, really extremely forcefully threw away God. In fact, if you look all around, God is a dirty word. God cannot be uh, talking about in schools. Critical correctness has destroyed God by looking at it and revising the history of God and making everything connected to God uh, basically bad, unenlightened thinking of, of unintelligent human beings who in the name of God went all over this world destroying. Well, I would uh, suggest that every religion, has apart from Buddhism, has created wars. But it's not the only force. This is human psychological force. It's not a... Uh, it's not God to blame, it is just the human's arrogance in thinking that their particular interpretation of this wondrous force and the name that they give to that wondrous force is superior to every other name that God has given. And this is the only problem with this. This is not uh, anything wrong with God. This is something wrong with the human mind, the human consciousness. So, right through my con uh, conscious development, I have kept a feeling for God, a deep love in my heart for God. And at the same time, I don't talk about this so much because, well, number one, it's extremely uh, off-putting to some people who have been, yes, programmed against this feeling for God or have been taught, educated, you could say, that God... The God concept is a very uh, primeval and uh, dangerous concept and it's much better to throw it away and uh, start with uh, a humanistic view of life. And if we do that, all these wars with, about God will stop. But, but I suggest to you that these wars are in the heart and mind of humanity anyway. And if they don't fight over their concepts of God, they will fight over their concepts of money and the distribution of money. Or they will fight over just the differences in our languages. But they will find something which they can fight over. Now, oneness exists. And the big debate really is, is this oneness the void? Just a, 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 a what can we call it? Potentiality is a good way of saying this. A potentiality, a potential field of consciousness and energy out of which we arose as individuals and a collective species on one small planet. And of course that means that probably on the other planets there are many, many other life forms and, and intelligences. Now is it just uh, a product of a void? Think about that product of the void. If it's a product of the void, then it's a product of chance. The chance jumbling up of, of atoms, creating chemistry, creating the potential for life, and life having intelligence enough to develop. We talk about the intelligence within life. It's evolutionary, but how does that just develop? How does consciousness just develop? So, the idea of a created void is one thing, but I think it's a cop-out because people are uh, afraid to say what there seems to be, if we really look at this in any intelligent way, a creative power behind all of this. A power which sees me personally, which feels me personally, which understands my work and watches me and, and, and protects me at times when I need it. Or sometimes maybe gives me a little bit of a painful uh, lesson so that I wake up and uh, walk upon my path. Everything 
that I feel about the spiritual pathway is that the pathway exists until we awaken to the God consciousness within. When we awaken to this, there is no pathway. In fact, the pathway is just a creative process. So the awakening is, is, is a knowledge that I am one with God, I am one with the cosmos, I am one with the principles and purpose of the creative principle, which is God. Now, to cop out of that and not talk about God and just talk about oneness is a very clever move that uh, dissociates us from a feeling that we have a responsibility to God. And in some ways, as I said earlier, about the saying in England that you throw away the child, the baby with the bathwater. This is definitely the throwing away of the baby with the bathwater. No matter what your view of religion is and how negative you see religion has been in the past, historically, all the wars, etc., etc., that is just one side of the equation. We have to look at the divine art and consciousness which religion has nurtured within the Islamic faith. Here in Granada, when you go and see some of the, the wonders of Islamic art and culture, then you have to see God, the deep working of God, and not only God, but the deep devotional energy of those creators. They were motivated to produce the most sublime art. <laughs> now that doesn't just happen. That is a part of connect, reconnecting to God. Of course, you can't reconnect to God because you are always part of God. But uh, isolated consciousness, which thinks it's isolated, needs to understand it's not. So that it allows the grace, the will, the beauty of God to enter the heart. Okay, so I'm talking about God, and a lot of people know I talk about God. And they say, well, what do you mean by God? Is, is that a Christian God, or, or what? Well, of course, I suppose I could answer that by saying, well, I was, a, I was brought up a Catholic family. I did listen to a lot of what was said to me. I also uh, found, particularly, a Catholic mysticism, a deep, silent Catholic pathway, which was as, as deep and devotional as any of the uh, ones which are uh, worshipped now. For example, everyone knows of, of the great Indian gurus. Uh, they, they know of Yogananda, they know Sri Aurobindo and the mother, they know of a hundred of their favorite ones or fifty of their favorite ones. Everyone has different mystics from the East which they uh, follow. Um, now what is the difference? Do, do those mystics um, give us any more than the, the contemplation of the Christian mysteries? Do they have secrets beyond those contemplations of, of those mystics? Yeah, my answer to that is no. They just have a framework in the mind that has been created by the great questions of the, that the Indian society has asked for, asked, asked for a long time. They have a, a, a big framework from which to talk their philosophy. But if you go into mystical Christianity, if you go into uh, all of its different offshoots, and if you go into true Western esoteric systems, if you have a good Kabbalah teacher that teaches you the mysteries of the Jewish mysticism, if you have a good Sufi teacher that helps you to connect to the prophets and to God, um, you will go into that and you will feel those God forces. And if you have an open mind, you will approach those God forces in a different way from the way your teacher is. So you go beyond the form all the time. So the form, whether it be Christianity or Islam or the worship of uh, love and devotion for the particular God image within the Hindu system, all lead them the same path. They are pathways back to this thing we call God or living, loving intelligence. And it doesn't matter which of those paths you take, but there is a danger, I see. 
in this belief that we can talk about the universe, oneness and all other things without this devotion. So there we have oneness, we have God, and we have ideas about the void or the great creative space of, of Buddhism. And yet they are just different ways of seeing um, the creative processes. Recently on my lightning strike meditation course in, in Sweden, we did deep meditations and I asked the students, um, what is this power you feel in the moment, in the now? What is the now? And one of my students, Rosie, who's also a good friend, uh, came, just opened her eyes. She was sitting in a very peaceful state. And she said, the moment, it's everything and nothing. Wow, that's such a Zen koan. It's a perfect Zen koan. A spiritual riddle. But it's not that hard to work out. For the creative void is the no thing or nothing. And the everything it's the opportunities that the creative mind of God offers us at every moment. Every moment is ripe with possibility. For it is part of the creative process of the universe and God. And our freedom is that we are part of God. That we are part of the oneness. And we are creative part of the oneness. So everything is in this moment. Every choice, every possibility. And there's nothing in the moment because... Um, we might just see the opportunity offered to us and refuse to take it, usually because of some personal fear within us. So oneness and choice and God. All of these, hello my little friend, talking to my dog. Um, all of these things are part of the process of creation, or the ongoing process of creation. And you are a creative principle as a human being. You are a universe, a whole universe of, of different powers and possibilities. And in this moment, in this very moment, when one's mind is open to potentials, there's great choice and power in who you are. The lack of power happens when we don't understand who we are. When we are reacting to the pains of the past, we are not truly in the moment. Then we are a program of fears. And this is blocking out God. This is ego, edging God out. And it's a process of destruction. Uh, at least it seems like a pro process of destruction because it's only the destruction of personality one. At the end of the day, no one is separated from God or the oneness. We are always there with the oneness. Okay, so think of all of the possibilities you have and you will realize that there is a loving force behind your life there is a loving oneness behind your life there is a creative principle that has tremendous grace I have had so many miracles occur in my life where things have just fallen to me opportunities just come now did I create this out of my creative mind? yes, probably but there was a grace behind it, there was a giving. The universe gave to me opportunities and openings. And this is the God principle, this is the intelligent mind of God, and this is also the loving kindness of God. So I would suggest that you personalize your spiritual pathway, and that if you haven't had a feeling for God because that's been educated out of you, I would suggest that you read again some of the mystics, whether those mystics be Christian, Islam, Jude, Judea, or they are some form of Hinduism. Whatever you are drawn to connect with, connect to God again. Think about God. Think about God as a creative, loving force that is in this room, in every atom of this room, it's in the walls, it's in the floors, it's in my body, it's in the birds singing outside. This is God. This is living intelligence. And it has a oneness about it. It is one thing. And also within this is the great space that the Buddhists talk about, the creative background of life. 
the openness, and that is equally accessed through the power of now, of understanding in this moment, all things are one, and all things, all possibilities, are forever manifesting to us when we are aware of opportunities that life gives us. And this is like the blessings of the angels. This is like the um, love of the mother, the great cosmic mother. So you see, I'm not trying to sell God to you. I'm trying to show you that if you open your heart to God, and you can use the Taoist concept of, of both the male and female, aspects of God. If you can open to God, yes, you can look back as some people said to me and you look at the Christian God and the Islamic version and uh, you go back to the roots of the God of Israel and it's a male and angry God. Well, those were interpretations of those times affected by the social construct of those times. That is not necessarily how God is. That is just a construct of the minds of the people of those times. I have found God is a loving yet powerful force. It is full of grace, and God gives me grace, gives me life, gives me healing. And within that personal connection to the oneness, there is, I personally have found, there's more power to live and to love. And you can accept everything, the names of God, God accepted in various cultures. But one, what one may not be able to accept is the violence done in the name of God. And I don't accept that as God. I accept it as human stupidity. But I personally do not believe ever that God has ordered us in this way to, to, to act in the name of God. Because the name of God is a sacred name, but there are thousands of sacred names of God. So it's humanity that has destroyed our connection to God by using this idea of God or a cosmic one intelligence behind everything, a anthropomorphic, I can never say this word, anthropomorphic God, a personalized giant man or woman in the sky, we can say, that has created some of the problems. I don't see God that way. It's beyond uh, any projection as a giant human being. God is the intelligence behind all life. And if there are higher forms of intelligence in, uh, in this universe, which I would think there would be, and there are different forms, there might be small, little, white, glowing people, why would God be made in us? You know, why are we copies of God? We're not the ultimate creation <laughs> in the cosmos. You see, it's a lot of stuff mixed up from the human mind and the human story that puts us off God and closes our hearts to the idea of God. I would suggest, as part of your spiritual practice, you, you reopen that door to a feeling for God, and you meditate on what is God, and you go deeply into that meditation. Don't define God through anything you've heard in the past, any concepts about God, the maleness, the femaleness. Of, if you are, I've been worshipping Mother Nature and the, and the mother aspect of God, then find out about the male aspect, because that's the bit you haven't found. If you've been totally, totally focused on a God as a male construct, then look at God as a female, so that you get the yin and yang of it, the, which is, yin and yang is the first split, the first divine stirring of energies. So go into that, meditate on it, and it will release you from all spiritual ideas which are blocking some of the finer aspects of your life, especially, especially the wonderful aspect of the grace of God, the blessing of God, entering your life, bringing peace, love, stability, and change, but also sorting out various blocked areas of your life that may, may be areas such as, as love and relationship, uh, areas where your personality is fear body aspect, the pain body of Ekatola is is holding you back. And allow the grace and light of God to enter your heart and mind, to open the pathways of light into the mind, so that your thinking can be renewed and reformed, 
and into your heart so that you feel the love of God as a living, pulsing beauty within you. And you know that that love of God can then transform your life in natural, organic ways. Okay, that's my talk. Not too long. But it will tie some of the stuff up with the early talks about oneness. And it will help you, hopefully, if you've closed off to the idea of God, to reopen and explore that. And try to work out why you closed off that. It's usually all of the negative things you hear about God or God is portrayed as, as in its most crazy extreme, like the evangelical churches uh, going around the world trying to convert people, or the extreme extremists within Islam who are going around bombing in the name of God. But these, I posit, are not um, truly aspects of God, they're, they're aspects of the human mind. And because of these extremists, God is neglected as a, as a reality. The truth. I know if you open up to this, your spirituality will deepen, and the power of God and all of the forces, and it doesn't matter if you see that, those forces, and you use Hindu terms, or the way they have uh, put their cosmology together, or you see it in, in Christian mystical terms, or Islamic terms, or any other term, they're just ways of seeing. Go beyond that and feel the power of God. Feel that force is a healing force. Entering your life and healing your life. And if you do that, I know that everything within you will change. And your spiritual pathway will actually just become a spiritual now. A spiritual living. The pathway will in one sense disappear and you'll feel the grace of God and the love of God and the power of God within all things at all times in your life. Okay. This is talk 10. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back in, uh, oh, whenever, with my next talk. And take care of yourselves and open up to 